There has never been a time in human history where information is as readily available as it is today. But with so much information living online, new issues arise. Misinformation, disinformation, and something known as confirmation bias, which is a cognitive bias where we seek out information to prove what we already thought to be true. For example, despite the research behind and availability of safe vaccines, there are an unknown number of websites preaching the dangers behind them. What has concerningly followed is measles cases in the United States reaching the highest level in 25 years. Climate change remains a highly polarized political issue with some denying the problem is real despite proven research. And there is a new term we all know. You are fake news, go ahead. Technology has brought us to a point where we can no longer believe everything we hear, read, or even see. This altered video of U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was slowed down to make her sound intoxicated. Sure, there are visuals that obviously were planned long before I said. It spread like wildfire across social media. In 2018, misinformation was to blame for fueling chaos, confusion, violence, and death in Myanmar. It triggered mob attacks that left dozens dead in India. Experts are calling this current era information disorder. Its main contributors are misinformation, which is when false information is shared without the intention to harm, and disinformation, when false information is knowingly shared to cause harm. Disinformation takes many forms. Sometimes it's a manipulated photograph. Sometimes it's a rumor that people might share with you face to face. Maybe it's a conspiracy theory that you might find on a platform like YouTube. There are many different elements to it. But propaganda, rumors, and conspiracy theories are far from new. Some say the moon landing was a hoax or that Elvis and Tupac are still alive. But what makes the current phenomenon of disinformation different from the past is how quickly it spreads from one platform to another and how easy it is to produce from places like the Russian Troll Factory. We've never had a means by which anybody can create fabricated content really, really easily. So I could set up a website today with any sort of domain. I can use very clever photoshopping techniques to manipulate an image. I can circulate a rumor through a family Facebook messenger group. And all of a sudden, this can travel like wildfire. And while research has shown that YouTube played a major part in convincing some people that the Earth is flat, technology isn't the only factor to blame in all of this. There is also a growing distrust for science and institutions. We like to blame Facebook, we like to blame WhatsApp. But we also have to recognize that, particularly over the last 20 years, many people's lives look quite different. There's still the impact of the global financial crisis on many people around the world. There are fears around climate change. There are concerns about how these shifts in immigration are going to affect local communities. And so there are lots of things right now that people are concerned about. And because they're concerned, they're looking to politicians and they're not necessarily seeing strong political institutions. They're looking to the news media and they're worried that the news media isn't necessarily telling them the whole story. Social media giants like Facebook, Twitter, and Google have promised to curb misinformation on topics like vaccines. So legitimate news sources are prioritized instead of posts with higher engagement. And then there are companies like Storyful. The agency finds, verifies, and licenses user-generated, newsworthy, or viral content on behalf of media organizations, including Global News. We have journalists who are specialists in these beats. And we also uh, work with our technology teams and they've built us a range of proprietary tools um, which allow us to search across mainstream and fringe platforms at the same time. And so that means that um, when we observe a phenomena like this, we can very quickly search to see, okay, well, where has this come from? Where did it first appear? And um, I suppose that helps us identify the orange origins of these things um, and get them across to our clients as quickly as possible. They've dealt with their share of both misinformation and disinformation. When the world's attention was on Thailand last July during a rescue mission to free a team of young soccer players from a flooded cave, fake videos and accounts went viral online. Storyful was able to determine the content was actually from Wisconsin and had been online since at least 2012. And that idea of old footage coming back when a news event happens is something we see time and time and time again. When it comes to fighting trolls with clear intentions of spreading false information, it gets a bit more challenging. 
That was seen in a number of different ways ahead of the 2018 U.S. midterm elections, including with hashtag no men midterms. The hashtag was accompanied by a series of quite sophisticated looking images and it purported to come from the U.S. Democrat Party. And the idea was, according to the hashtag, that men should not vote in the U.S. midterms. And as a result of their not voting, women's voices would become relatively more powerful, the hashtag claimed. But of course, the hashtag was false. It didn't come from the Democrats. It was not genuine in any way. And in fact, it was something that was hatched on 4chan. And it was done as a deliberate attempt to embarrass the Democrats, to fool members of the public into believing the campaign to be genuine, and ultimately to get one over on journalists as well. But as information disorder becomes more and more sophisticated... President Trump is a total and complete dip. You see, I would never say these things. Someone else would. Someone like Jordan Peele. Experts agree the battle against fake news is far from over. The people who are spreading this misinformation, they get it. They get that people are trying to stop them. They get how these platforms work. And they get, in many cases, what they need to do to avoid detection. So what can we do to navigate the pollution of information out there? Societies need gatekeepers. They need uh, people who, who can be trusted, who can help us navigate the information ecosystem. And right now, we don't have that. And so I think for individuals who are feeling nervous about how do I navigate this? How do I know what I'm seeing online is true or not? And I would argue that this is a time that we go back to trusted sources. Thanks for watching Global News. If you enjoyed what you saw, like the video. You could also hit the subscribe button to get all the latest international news and trending videos.